he ended up turning into the, the guy that he thought he was going to be. You know, Josh was was weary of Bully all along, and Bully ended up being exactly what Josh thought he was. You know, he's this, you know, politician scumbag type of guy, and he gets what he wants, and he he's done that. The man I'm speaking to has been a mainstay of Impact Wrestling for such a long time. He has gone from a technical wrestler to a crazy hardcore madman to a member of Honor No More to a man who recently went as far as to bury PCO in the desert. Eddie Edwards joins me as always on SportsKira.com. An honor to speak to you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. And you got you got it a little bit wrong. I was the leader. Of honor no more not just a member the leader of it but i'm doing good thanks for having me so, so about that i mean you're not a part of the group anymore what went wrong you know uh sometimes the stars don't align you know we we had our mission we had our goals that we tried to achieve and sometimes you know you, you fall short and that's what happened and you know people move on and do it and have to go do other things and you know for me that's okay i I've done it before. I'll I'll switch up what I'm doing. I'll go back to the drawing board and see what I can come up with. That is amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, everybody knows that you're such a great technical wrestler. You can do the hardcore thing. How does participating in a cinematic kind of environment uh, measure up? And everybody's talking about that match. So what are, what was your experience filming that match with PCA? Yeah, it's cool. You know, it's it's anytime you get to step outside of your comfort zone, it's pretty cool. You know, as long as you're open to new experiences. And that was, you know, I I was lucky enough. I did some stuff with Sammy Callahan back when he broke my face with the baseball bat. We did some stuff in the woods and some cinematic type stuff. Um, I also did a couple things or, or at least one thing at the Hardy compound um, a few years ago. So it's not my first time doing it. But I welcome the chance to do it because it's something different. You know, you get to get out there. You know, we're in the middle of nowhere in Las Vegas, you know, filming this. So it's like this crazy atmosphere that you're in. Things, you know, something I never thought I'd be doing in the world of professional wrestling. So I get to go out there and me and PCO get to try to create something new and something different. And I feel like we're able to do that. And you know, we still get to tell the story that is Eddie Edwards versus PCO. We still get to move forward with that story, but we get to do it slightly different than the rest of the show right now. So it was it was a lot of fun, and anytime I'm able to do something like that, I welcome it. I mean, the fact is, uh, at, at the end of the day, I, I spoke to you when you came, came down to India all those years ago, and uh, we have spoken several times since. I mean, uh, you mentioned when you got your face broken and everything. Your character has evolved so much to... Uh, becoming the leader, as you said, of Honor No More. Where do you want your character to go from this point on? You know, I, I think it, right now it's a it's a time to kind of sit and almost see what happens, see where we want to go, where do I want to go from here. Obviously, <clears throat> you know, the goal is always to be around that world title picture or to be in one of the main main stories that's going on in our TV show. But you know, I I'm aware that you can't you can't be there all the time. You know, nonstop, and I'm okay with that. But I just want to, again, back to you know, trying something different. I'd love to work with some of the guys I've never worked with. You know, I'd love to work with with a Mike Bailey. I'd like to do something with Trey Miguel again. You know, guys that are you know, working their way up, guys that are younger than me, guys that I could either you know teach something, or perhaps they could teach me something. But you know, different matchups and different um, stories and angles, I'd love to try. But for right now, it's kind of Let's see where the cards fall, you know, deal with hopefully the stuff with PCO is finally behind me and kind of move on from there and see see whatever I got to do and I'll be happy to do it. But you mentioned him. Uh, I mean, PCO, I'm 36 years old. P uh, PCO was one generation before I became a fan. He's been wrestling since that time. I was born in 86. I checked out his Wikipedia. He's been wrestling since 87 from the time I was a year old. To what yeah. do you attribute his longevity? I mean, the fact that he's still so good. You know, I I applaud him honestly for for what he does, what he's able to do at such a high level, for how long he's been doing it. You know, for his age, he's you know he's a success story. Uh, you know, 
sure, I want to try to kill him and I try to bury him. But aside from that, he is a success story. He is a guy that's been living his dream for since 1987. He's been doing it at a professional level and he's still doing it at a high level. You know, to me, it gives me hope, honestly, because he's doing it at his age now. You know, I'm getting older. I'm not getting any younger, but I look at him and I see that, you know, hopefully that can be me. Maybe I won't be doing as many crazy things as him or trying to break all these, you know, strength and power records. But for me, I still want to be doing professional wrestling at the highest level for as long as I can. And I look at him and I see maybe I have more time than I than I think. I, I, I would think that Eddie Edwards would be doing a lot of crazy things even at that age <laughs> based on your track record so far. <laughs> Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll see how it goes. Whatever I got to do to stick around, I'll do it. Uh, another man, I mean, uh, whose uh, whose longevity is can be compared to that of PCO is Raven, and he went into the Hall of Fame recently. You got to do a lot of cool things with Raven during your storyline together. Oh, what was it like? Do, do you think he deserves a place in the Hall of Fame? Oh, without a doubt. You know, uh, I, I know people talk about. It. I don't know how much it's out in the open, but how much. You know, Raven did behind the scenes and how much of his mind is still used, you know, in, in the professional wrestling world today. Like everything that he did, people have always said that he was a genius, you know, as far as re outside of wrestling, but also inside of wrestling. We had a really creative mind where, again, we talk about thinking outside the box. He was a guy who was always very creative. And, you know, the, the clockwork orange match, you know, the promos that he cut, the style that he did, it was very different for the time, but it helped set the trend for what professional wrestling became and without a doubt he belongs in the hall of fame and like you said i was lucky enough to do um i was in the mental asylum with raven when i was when i was dealing with the same callians or the moose stuff i'm sorry but um to be able to do something cool with him that was definitely one of the bucket list items for me so as a former world champion uh what do you think of josh alexander you went up uh, against him you had such a great match what do you think of him as the face of the company you know, I I have respect for Josh. You know, obviously I wanted to win that world title and I failed at that. And again, things happen, sometimes you fall short. But, uh, you know, I have nothing but respect for Josh. What he's been doing, you know, the matches he's been having, um, he is what Impact Wrestling is all about. You know, he's about professional wrestling. He's going out there, he's giving his all. He'll, he'll come back, he's beaten, he's bloodied, you know, he's bruised, but it doesn't stop him. He'll go out there every day. You know, he'll go out there, he'll have an Iron Man match, he'll go out there, he'll do have another match. It doesn't matter to him. He just wants to put on the best professional wrestling product that he can, and that's what Impact Wrestling is all about. And he's, you know, Josh is a guy who, was in professional wrestling for, you know, over a decade, like 14 years before getting a shot. And he clawed and he fought and he worked his way to get to Impact Wrestling. And then he wasn't satisfied with that, just being a part of Impact. He then fought and clawed and worked his way to become the world champion. That's something I respect because that's something that I did in my own career. So when I look at him, I have nothing but respect for the way he's his path has gone and for everything he's accomplished. Amazing. So let's uh, play a small kind of rapid fire round and maybe I could shoot some questions at you. You tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. The only rule in this match is you cannot say Eddie Edwards to any of the questions. Okay. Right? <laughs> Strongest guy in the locker room. Strong, oh man. Strongest guy in the locker room. Ah, you know, I might have to say Moose. But as much as I don't want to say it, I'll say Moose. Most no, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna yeah. say Joe Hendry. I want to change it for Moose. Joe Hendry. <laughs> awesome. Uh, most athletic guy in the locker room. Um, Ace Austin. Perfect. Uh, your childhood wrestling hero. Eddie Guerrero. Your childhood wrestling crush. <laughs> Chris Travis. One person you still want to wrestle that you never had the chance to wrestle? Kurt Angle. Wow. Uh, who is the most underrated person in the locker room right now? Rich Swan. Awesome. You al already said uh, Eddie Guerrero. So, who is that wrestler from another era that you never got to face who you would have loved to face? Shawn Michaels. Awesome, man. So that ends that rapid fire round. Thank you for playing that with me. 
thank you for humoring our fans as well. Uh, so basically, uh, we the last time I spoke to you was when, like you said, you had your face broken. Uh, looking back, so many years later, how important a turning point was that? You know, it, it was uh, very important when I go back and look at it. Obviously, it wasn't an ideal situation, you know, of course, but things happen. And I feel like it, it was the prime example of, you know, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And I feel like that incident, that accident changed the course of my career. It forced me again, you know, the theme of this interview is stepping outside of your comfort zone. It forced me to step outside of that comfort zone of, of who I was and what I was as far as in the wrestling ring and outside of it. It forced me to go this other direction where, you know, I was getting a little more hardcore. I was doing more promos and more vignettes and some of the cinematic stuff. It forced me to step outside of the comfort zone and, and evolve and it helped kind of kick off to where I am now, where it feels like I, for me, I'm the most comfortable. I feel I'm the most well-rounded I've ever been in my whole career. And that's because of that incident that forced me to grow and evolve and get comfortable being something other than what I was. And without that, you know, who knows where I'd be or what I'd be doing right now. Maybe I'd be in the same spot. Maybe I wouldn't, but I wouldn't want to go back and change it because without those moments, without everything that happened, I wouldn't be who I am today outside the ring, let alone inside the ring. Now, I mean, it's interesting you say that because I know you're on Twitter, you're everywhere else. And everybody always said that Eddie Edwards is this great wrestler. He can do anything in the ring. But maybe on the promo front, maybe on the character front, he wasn't as developed before the whole incident with the eye happened and you had that story with uh, Sammy. And obviously, you've come a long way since then. You went insane and everything else. Uh, so I, I kind of agree. Uh, uh, did, did did those uh, criticisms, did those comments bother you at that time? You know, I, everybody. The thing that people don't understand, or you know, maybe wrestling fans don't understand that, for the most part, most of us, uh, me specifically, I'm my own worst critic. You, nobody's going to say anything to me that I haven't said to myself watching a. a a replay or watching a video of myself or whatever it is i've said everything worse than anybody could ever say that's that's the mentality that we have and that's why you know people ask what my best match is and to me it's my next match because i haven't had my best match you know it's only a matter of time we can always be better we can always you know evolve we can always do every bit of our character di differently and better and that's how i feel i'm never satisfied with what i can do or what i'm doing as long as i continue to grow i'm happy and that's how i feel about i feel like i've grown over time amazing do you think bully ray has it in him to take down josh alexander you know, this is a it's a different monster that Josh is facing here against Bully Ray. It's something uh, completely different. You know, he ended up turning into the, the, the guy that he thought he was going to be. You know, Josh was was weary of Bully all along, and Bully ended up being exactly what Josh thought he was. You know, he's this you know politician scumbag type of guy, and he gets what he wants, and he he's done that. So I think that Josh. You know, he's the world champion for a reason. He's been the world champion for this long for a reason. But he's got a tall task at hand. Um, I think Bully's coming in to send a message. He's, he wants to show that not only can he still hang, but that he's still one of the best wrestlers in the world. So Josh has this handful. But I think in the end, I think Josh will come out on top, on top because of everything Josh has gone through to get to where he is. He's not going to just let it slip through his hands. Amazing. So as we wind down the interview, uh, we are here to promote the uh, uh, Impact Plus app uh, where people can see you perform and the entire uh, roster perform. Uh, can you tell our audience about the app? Yeah, I mean, the great thing about Impact Plus is you can go back, you can watch any match in the history of, between TNA and Impact. You know, all these matches that, that people talk about, you know, the AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels matches, you can watch... You know, you can watch my evolution from the Sammy Callahan to Moose to where I am today. You can watch everybody grow. And it's cool to kind of be able to sit back and, you know, you never know when you're when somebody's doing an interview. And, and if I throw out a match, maybe you haven't seen it. Now you can go back and you can pull it up. You can pull up, you know, Samoa Joe versus Kurt Angle. 
you know, you can pull up Kurt Angle's debut. You can pull up anything you want to see. It's a, it's a pretty cool thing to be able to have that in your phone, in your back pocket at any time. So check out Impact Plus and be sure to follow Impact Wrestling along. We're doing some great things, you know, not just Impact Plus, but our live events, our TV show. I feel we got something really great going on here. So please tune in and check us out. So everyone has seen Samoa Joe versus Kurt Angle and also the three-way between AJ and uh, Christopher Daniels Samoa Joe. What is that underrated gem on this app that you would recommend to our fans? You know, for me, I- I'm I'm going to be a little selfish here. I'm going to talk about, you know, me and Davey against the Team 3D and the Hardy Boys and the team in the Hardys in a TLC or Monsters Ball match, you know, for the World Tag Team titles. A very big moment for me, uh, for myself and Davey, but it was a real turning point in my career. Um, so please, there's a few of those matches, but please find those. Um, I enjoyed those anytime we, uh, we had those. Those are real fun matches. Do you think the Wolves could reunite now that you know, you're in a different <laughs> phase? You know, you never say never in the world of professional wrestling. Anything could happen. Who knows what's going to happen down the road. But there's always a chance. Amazing. My final question to you. Do you have a message for your fans in India? You know, I just want to say thank you for the support. Thank you for supporting, you know, not only myself, but for supporting Impact Wrestling. It, It means the world to us. And hopefully, you know, Impact Wrestling will return to India sometime in the future. I'd love to be back. But honestly, thank you for the support. It means more than you'll ever know. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I can't wait to see what you do next week on the show. Thank you very much. Take care.